Okay, taking full advantage of the nice day. We've got most of the studs installed. You see, I just, between using the trailer, there's the ladder, ratchet strap, a safety line just in case, even though it won't go all the way to the ground. <clears throat> I'm using the eye grip 25 R's, which according to their web page, that is the appropriate. I don't know if you can, can you see this here? Okay, so this is the pre-drilled track. Most of it's done. I got 20 or so to go. <clears throat> All right, and it comes with, now this tool is actually, if you look online, is for a different style, but maybe they've just come to one and done. But the, the stud will go in this end, and you can see the little shoulder there, and they tell you to put it in till the shoulder meets the rubber of the track which I have done cordless drill no rush of course having it up the way I do makes it so I can just sit here and do this nice and relaxing like so we'll get it back in the the uh, drill we'll get one in there and we'll show you what we what we're doing we're trying to be consistent I'm sure and when I look at the first few I put in I definitely think they're sticking out a little more than they need to but we can we can snug those in and uh so just give us a second all right so you get it in you get it to the hole keep it nice and straight I do have them soaking in a little water with a little dish soap just to help make the process a little easier. And then you see the little shoulder makes contact and you go in a little bit till it looks flush and boom. It is quite, and I went a little like slow, slow for you and for me because there's no need to rush. So. <clears throat> Now you look at these on their own. Now I say it's supposed to stick out five millimeters, and I think I'm not quite going all the way, all the way. Not quite going all the way, all the way, but I, I don't know how much difference it will make, probably for the longevity of the stud. But just say you know they're not like traditional studs; they're not for the major traction. It's just for additional. In an icy corner i live next to a rather the largest lake here in new hampshire and so you know and i'm surrounded by lakes actually so some icy conditions across the lake can exist and as well as you know early and late season riding so any additional help is good so what doesn't look so impressive here looks a little better once it's in so we'll get another one in here And again, just the same process, and you can go a little faster. And I just tend to slow down when I get a little close. And see, that one seems like it's out a little bit more, but I also am noticing <clears throat> when the track has the the extra from when it came out of its mold you know has that little flap which does sort of affect your eye a little bit but as you can see once you get it in let's see can we see that one right you know there so not a lot it's not giving you a lot they're not advertising you you know just an aid just an aid and of course, I do have the track up, so it's easy to move. I usually do three rows at a time here, but I'll show you very easy to move the track. And I don't know if you can see up there, but 
And so we're just about to the end. We're just about done. Really easy with the pre-drill. I couldn't imagine doing this if you had to drill all the holes in advance, to be honest with you. I don't think it would be worth the effort. Because if the track wasn't already ready for it, maybe you should just go with traditional studs if you really felt you needed something or buy a different track. But that's me, because that just seems like a lot of extra work where you could screw something up and you know, tracks are expensive enough without screwing something up. And so, all right, we'll continue on here. Like I said, just have them in a little soapy water just because it, you know, little, little lubrication factor make life a little bit easier getting them in. And it is easy, as you can see. Mm, just like that. Just like that. So that is about my consistent level, which is probably just a little high, but... I guess you could say we're erring on the side of caution. We do look forward to trying it. I see how it compares <coughs> a little bit. Actually, be more to a uh, friend has not a switchback, but you know, it's the 137 inch. Mm. But there, you know, just like that. Yeah, we got one, one, two, three, four, five, six rows. And it is, how many rows is it? So it's one, two, three, four, five rows. Every five rows is two. And then the sixth row is a row of three. And it's roughly for a 146 inch track. It, it's around 115 of these. I haven't counted how many are left, but I do believe that was the general consensus was around 115. Of course, you know, I don't feel the need for traditional studs. I think that's a lot of things that can go wrong. And I went 10 years on my last track, which is a 170, 175. Without a single stud. And the only time I can think of is, you know, some icy days where it would have been nice. Ice on a hill, nothing worse than a hill where you're losing some ground. So this is just to hopefully <coughs> try to make that a little better. And I figured, well, before we put a, any, any get mileage on the track, we might as well do it now. See, now I felt like this one is a little low same with that one and you can back it out if you can get it in there you can just flip the tool it's designed to get for taking them out flipping the tool but i usually just push hard get it to squeeze in through the little rubber again because it's wet And then we just grab the track. And boom, yeah, so you can, I don't know if you can start to see that. So yeah, some of them definitely, there's like this one here, this one right up here. I think we're gonna, while I look up in there, it's definitely more than five millimeters. So we'll give a few of these a little snug in because a couple of them I did yesterday just to see how they were gonna go in. So that's about it. Oh, sorry I rambled on so long. <laughs>